Hey guys, I got another five decks for the other five classes, Theorycraft decks, uh, mostly no hands, originals, new archetypes, uh, new ideas. Uh, the first is a Frenzy Warrior, uh, where one of the biggest cards we're, we're kind of abusing, where Warrior has that's just really strong is this new Outrider's Axe. It's a 3-3 three, three weapon for four mana. Whenever it attacks and kills, a, you attack and kill a minion with it. Uh, draw a card. So this card can get you so much value while just being very efficient tempo. tempo. Uh, a 4 mana 3-3 three, three weapon is as good as a true silver. So if not better. And then we add Corsair Catch so that we can get 4 cards. So because of that we can just get lots of value. Um, and then from there you know, we're looking to gain life, kind of play defensive. Uh, we have a Barov as our only real big board clear but we've got things like Blade Master Samaru. Um, and we're just kind of looking to fight for board in general, not let our opponents get too ahead on board. And then we've got the, uh, we have two kind of big late game win conditions. We have Overlord Sarfang, which is Battle Card Resurrect to Friendly Frenzy Minions. So you uh, kind of are fighting for board, then you drop them down, two Frenzy Minions, a huge tempo push. Same thing with Kogara Battle Scar, but summoning for Watch Post. So if we've, we do run four Watch Posts. Uh, realistically, we get two of this down. That's still very efficient. So we kind of play these cards and, and play big boards, um, and then we kind of push between those turns and put on a lot of pressure. That's the idea of this deck. Um, I think uh, just the real card that's kind of carrying this deck, I think, is going to be Outrider's Axe, which is one of the strongest cards, just being able to draw all those cards while controlling the board. Um, and we do run the Blood Sail deck end, which is the next weapon you play costs one less. So you can play Blood Sail. Uh, then Corsair Catch, and then Outrider's Act as early as turn three. So that can be very strong. Next, I got a Miracle Priest for you guys. Um, so what the, what this does is it kind of similar to my Cube Miracle Priest that I played and lots of other players played uh, with running the Veil Weaver and the Nizami, and then bringing them back with Rally. One of the differences, though, is we don't have uh, the Cobalt Spellkin anymore that is rotating. Uh, so we have to kind of build it a little bit different, but we're also taking advantage of some new powerful cards uh, One of the powerful cards is Void Flare deal a damage to an enemy minion for every spell in your hand Well, guess what? We're generating so many spells So we generate all these spells from Veil Weaver and Nizami and then but we also can just use this if we're if we haven't drawn Veil Weaver and Nizami to get to remove the board uh, remember how strong Dynomatic was as a card and that was five mana. This is four mana. So we can use that and we also use Devouring Plague uh, to sort of just control the board early and then go off on these infinite sort of value turns where we uh, duplicate our Nizami and we just keep on making more and more cards. Uh, I'm also running one of Ysira. That gets us five cards, which is a huge thing of value. And they're all spell, or most of our spells, um, I believe three. And two of them are targetables, which are also good with our Veil Weaver mechanics. So I feel that's going to be a real nice thing. I also could see Murzon being there, but I think this deck really needs a top end dragon. And I think it's more fun to have Ysira. Uh, and it's new, so we'll see kind of how strong that feels. But that's the idea for the Miracle Priest. This deck's, uh, you have to have real fast AP to make decisions really fast. So not recommended for beginners, but a real fun deck to play. Next, I got a Secret Dude Paladin. So you've probably, if you've been paying attention, you've probably seen a lot of lists that are just more, just pure Secret Paladin. Um, but I was looking at them, and one of the things that I do worry about is that they're going to run out of value. And this is an archetype that my friend Last Champ came up with, and then we kind of worked on it to, to make it to the list it is now. Uh, so we were working on it, um, and what we do, one of the really cards that... I kind of thought was really bad, but he's given us he might be really good. Is from the last set is the Imprisoned Celestial. It's dormant four or five, um, and then Spellburst give you all your minions Divine Shield. So what you do is you play that on three, and then on five it comes alive, and we play Stand Against Darkness. And now we have a giant board of Divine Shields. So um, what we would do in a typical game is we might play something like Galloping Savior. No, sorry, we might play something like uh, Righteous Protector on one. Or at Night of the Atonement, or Night, Night of Anointment, sorry, that draws us a holy spell. And ideally, we play Sword of the Fallen on two. That's one of the strongest cards uh, in the set. And then we can just get these secrets and delay. So this allows us to get to our powerful three 
uh, five turn five plays where we're kind of just procrastinating. And then we do these big dude paladin plays. We have all these dude paladins, and then we can buff them up with things like Balloon Merchant, Warhurst Trader, or even I, I'm running a one of, uh, one of Pursuit of Justice, which I'm not sure about, but it does, gives your Silver Hand recruits permanently plus one attack. Uh, I'm not currently running the five drop that gives all your dudes permanently. Divine Shield, I feel we have enough Divine Shield effects, and it's a little bit just too slow. Uh, but I could see that being added in if maybe the deck gets refined, but that's the general concept. We use secrets to kind of, uh, and uh, these annoying minions to kind of get an early game this, and then we have this big push between like turns five and six and seven. Um, you know, you might be just kind of playing stuff like this, and you might go Cannon Master, but we're not, uh, I think other ones are running the, a lot of the three drops. There's a three drop that, uh, that's really good that whenever your secret gets activated, get plus two plus two, but we're not really looking to play the deck that way. We're playing more defensive and then kind of pushing in on the later turns. Next, I got a spell damage shaman. Uh, this is uh, another archetype I worked on with my buddy, the last champ. Uh, this is a, uh, it works uh, to kind of, it's kind of abusing a lot of really powerful spell damage stuff. Um, I'm running three weapons, I'm running two whack of moles and a rune dagger and two cage match custodians. I'm finding uh, when you run two cage mats and two weapons, you, you're too often not getting the draw. And I think rune dagger is a really interesting one of, but not actually good in the early game. So we really want the, the more prefer the whack of moles early. But what we're looking to do is kind of uh, kind of control the board early. And then we can get these powerful plays. So one thing you might do is you go in Prison Phoenix on two, and then you go Raz on five. Like that's been known. But I think what I really like about this list is the Malago. So we can draw our whole all our spells. So let's say Shaman often runs out of value. We're playing, we're kind of running out of stuff. We go Malagos, we draw a bunch of stuff, and then we could go something like uh the uh Brucon which is the nature spells plus three damage and then play a bunch of nature spells and lethal them. And because we draw all our spells reliably with Malagos, well, we should be able to reliably get a powerful lethal effect. So I think that's going to be real strong. And finally, I got a spell damage, a spell mage. Uh, this is primarily running the card Refreshing Spring Water, which is draw two cards uh, and refresh two mana crystals for every spell draw. Well, if you, your whole deck of spells, it's just basically a zero mana draw two that you have to have four mana to do. Very, very strong card. So we're kind of using that uh, and some other cards just to to have to be very efficient. Uh, we're using Encanter Slow to discount our deck and we're just gonna be really, really efficient. Uh, and we also have the Apex Blast, which is deal five, summon a five drop. So we have all this efficient stuff uh, and then we have all this burn as well. So we kind of, you know fight like maybe do some controlling the board plays early and then um just once we start getting doing any bout of head we can just do so much burn damage so we just do a little burn uh for minions and then we can kill them very effectively so i think this is gonna be real strong you can even use the primordial studies to, to discount and maybe do some uh otks with the counter slow if you get there but yeah overall i think uh this is going to be a real strong archetype they're just they just got even more synergy um so i think it's gonna be real good so anyways that's all i got for you guys sorry for uh for today uh so remember to check out my other video uh, where i have five other theory craft archetypes uh i think this is gonna be real fun remember though if you're on a budget these aren't the decks to craft i have another video where i go over budget decks that are kind of uh pre-existing archetypes so they're much safer they're much more likely to work uh, where new archetypes, sometimes they work real well and sometimes they're duds. And realistically, you don't really know until you've tested it. So uh, that's what I've got for you guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I'll be streaming all day Tuesday, trying these things out, seeing what's actually good, seeing what's not. So I hope to see you guys there. But anyways, hope you guys like these. Remember, like I said, be careful with your dust if you're a budget player. But, you know, have some fun. And if you don't like one of my cards or you think something's bad or you have an idea, do your thing. Don't do my thing. These are ideas. These are stuff to start off with. These are I things I I would like it, but you know, realistically, you go play one of these, you play two games, and you're like, yeah, I'm cutting out four of these or six of these or eight of these cards. Uh, these cards don't actually work. 
Um, and you can learn so much more through testing than through actual theory crafting. So a lot of theory crafting is, there's a real fun element of it, but in the, the day, uh, actual experience is key. So go in and test these out, try them out and let me know, did this deck work for you? Did it not? Hope you guys enjoy it.